Hello and welcome to episode 45 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is June 10th and together with Robert and Goran, we're here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello. So in the past, we have already talked about the Azure monitor for SAP several times. And today we have Ross joining us to take a closer look at the cluster monitoring um, and, and what you can do with Azure monitor. But before we go there, let's quickly take a look at some of the news from this week. So let me share my screen. What I actually want to start with is Sapphire. Um, so obviously um, Sapphire is, is, is happening right now and there were quite a few very interesting sessions. And um, this week, um, uh, Thomas Saueressig had also his um, session talking about yeah, resilient and sustainable supply chains and stuff like that. And one of the highlights from an SAP at Microsoft perspective, obviously, was that um, Scott Guthrie also joined um, Thomas um, in, in his keynote. And he was talking about um, yeah, how SAP and Microsoft, how we're working with digital supply chain and also obviously talking again about our um, partnership that uh, that is um, still going very strong. How we are working on different areas. I mean, Thomas had talked about um, um, how SAP is using HoloLenses and and other scenarios. So so it's a very um, interesting um, keynote, I would say, and it's definitely worth watching um, the the inter inter interaction between um, Thomas and, uh, and 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 Scott during this 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 keynote. Um, maybe on a on a related. Um, topic. Um, obviously, there were lots of sessions and I have not watched all of them, but but some of them. Um, and one that was quite interesting is uh, the one from Matt Ordish, who talked about um, yeah why customers prefer Microsoft Azure to unlock insights um, from their SAP data. It's a quick condensed um, session that uh, where, where Matt basically outlines the whole story of where customers can start by um, discovering the system or evaluating the systems and migrating, running, and then innovating with the system. So it's a yeah, a 15 minute session, um, and I think it's it's definitely worth um, uh, worth watching. Um, another thing that covers um, Sapphire, and I have to admit I have not yet um, listened to it, but um, in in an old ongoing tradition, um, um, Martin uh, Fischer from Bridging IT and, and Holger Müller had their um, usual um, session about uh, the, or fr from the coffee, coffee Corner radio. And um, typically it's, or in the past, it was always very interesting to listen to Holger and to Martin um, discussing yeah, the, the Sapphire or the, the quarterly numbers. So um, again, I've not yet um, listened to it, but I, I'm pretty sure that these, 38 minutes are also um, very worth to 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 listen to. Um, the next thing um, is that SAP has released um, their developer insights survey or the results from the survey. You, you might remember we also talked about this, um, that like every year SAP is, is asking the community to provide feedback and um, they, they have now released the results. There is um, a document, um, a report that you can take a look at that really outlines all the um, the answers or the results um, that were uh, provided by um, the yeah the developer by the community. Um, here they had 2,600 um, results, which I think is, is is fairly good. And yeah, they uh, yeah share some some interesting insights. Obviously, here they they're starting with um, the whole COVID situation, how the work changed, how really in the past, um, uh, before um, um, COVID impacted us, um, uh, yeah, a lot of participants obviously did not work from home. Then um, the, the the whole development changed to to working from home. So so there, there are some some insights like this. But then it's also getting really obviously um, SAP specific. So um, are we talking about backend developer, full full stack developer, front end developers, and there are some. I think some interesting insights there that are also quite relevant for for us. I mean, obviously, I've been talking about the whole power platform, how to use, um, how to enable um, front end developer or business users, citizens users, 
um, to to also work with SAP. And I think that fits very well also here in this um, developer story. Um, or there, there are some other um, interesting insights on cloud development and yeah, it's it's a, it's an interesting survey. Um, um, so I think it's also definitely worth um, to to take a quick look at that. Um, ah, here we go. Then um, there was um, a repeat or um, the second round of a joint hackathon between SAP and Microsoft um, in Australia. I think we talked about this um, a few months ago. Um, where we uh, talked about uh, the teams in Australia from SAP and Microsoft um, came together and they invited partners to develop um, um, yeah, scenarios or to hack some, some scenarios. And now there, there was this second round. Um, again, you, you, if you go to, to LinkedIn, you can already see um, some of the uh, results from the winners. So D DXC Technologies, um, then uh, let me see what were, were the other ones. Uh, no, no, I don't, I don't see it again. But but they they really came up with some some really um, nice solutions again. And I I only have seen a, a few of them already talking about them or or showcasing their scenarios. I I'm sure that Murali and um, the team that they will publish some additional insights there. But it, it's. It's just nice to see that if you're using SAP and Microsoft technologies, um, what can you do, um, uh, what, what results you can get by, by just using these two technologies. So I think that's, it's, it's definitely a beautiful concept and I, I hope it will be repeated um, many more times to really engage our partners and, and, and show what's actually possible there. Um, the next thing, um, there is a is a nice um, blog post by Talal and why customers, including SAP, choose Azure for their SAP solution. I think um, uh, this this blog post really takes a broad look at some of the customers um, that are using SAP on Azure, that are running SAP on Azure, that are innovating um, on uh, yeah. Uh, by, by, by leveraging Azure services, by leveraging um, SAP services and really um, combining them. And I think Talal um, picked um, customers across different regions, across different industries and um, tells their story why um, they uh, choose SAP on, um, on, on Azure. So uh, there's yeah lots of information here why Customers broadly favor Azure. Um, I mean, th there are some some surveys there and stuff like that that, that really highlight the yeah that that Azure is a is a very important workload now for for customers running SAP. So it's a it's a it's a nice read with with lots of links with lots of videos behind these links that um, uh, show this this story of of these customers running SAP on Azure. So if you have some time, I you you can see there's there's lots of content there. Um, take a look, um, watch some of these videos, read some of the use cases. I think it's definitely um, worth it. Now, the next thing that's worth watching, um, obviously build is over, um, but there's a really nice um, summary video um, on, on what actually happened during build. Um, there's um, the, the keynote from Satya, obviously, but but really also other impressions um, that happened. Um, obviously, also highlighting the developer keynote from Scott Hanselman and and, um, and colleagues there. So I think um, if you did not yet have time to watch um, um, the um, some of the sessions on build, then at least start with this um, summary, and then maybe you find some some other shows that are um, interesting for you. And um, speaking of events. Um, the next event is, is coming up. That's Inspire. So Microsoft Inspires will start on July 14th and 15th. Um, as always, there, there will be some really interesting sessions. Um, yeah, the, the, the usual suspects, obviously Satya doing the, the keynote and then lots of other um, uh, yeah, keynote like sessions. But then there will be again a lot of um, very uh, more detailed and 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 um, more technical sessions there as well. Um, content is again free, so you can just register and uh, watch some additional uh, yeah sessions there. 
Then one last thing that I stumbled across um, upon um, is this what the heck. And that's actually something really cool. And I, I have to admit, I, I wasn't aware of this, but this is a, um, a collections of hackathons. And um, they are like yeah, almost 50 um, hackathons in, in the meantime available. And the beautiful thing here is that these are really um, hackathons that you can use to make a hackathon with um, with colleagues or whatever. And um, so there are a lot of different topics and there are also there is also a hackathon on SAP on Azure. And the, the beautiful thing there is that um, there are instructions for uh, for for the teacher, basically, or for the trainer. And then there there um, is is content available for the students. And um, the, the, here it's it's um, it's um, separated in, in different challenges and all the content is there. Um, it's it's really and um, um, it, it, it looks like really a very comprehensive way to um, learn new things. So if you are interested in, in SAP on Azure, then um, maybe this hack is, is interesting. But but there are, again, lots of other topics um, that you might be interested. So if you want to get an introduction in Kubernetes, then um, there's uh, here again these, these different challenges that guide you through um, uh, the different steps on how to get started with, with Kubernetes and, and so on. So I think um, I just by chance I, I I found this this link and I thought um, this is also something that can be quite interesting. So with this, um, that that was basically some of the news um, that that we found um, this week. With this, I would actually like to um, hand over to our our guest today. So so Ross um, had published um, this blog post on Azure monitoring. And he volunteered to to join um, the podcast today. So, um, with this, Ross, maybe um, maybe you can quickly introduce yourself, and then I'm really looking forward to the the demo that you have prepared. Okay, okay. awesome. Well, um, I'm Ross Spahold. I am with, uh, and I'm getting a little echo. Are you are you hearing? No, this? for me it's fine actually. Mm. No. Okay, um, Ross Spahold. I'm with the uh, Azure. Um, uh, it's called Azure Global Customer um, uh, Engineering. So what we do is we work with customers uh, for their SAP deployments and uh, for a couple of reasons. One, to help make them successful, bring the knowledge that we have of, of those uh, implementations, and also to find out what uh, doesn't work well with customer situations, what they need from Azure that we don't already have so that we can feed that back into the engineering process. Um, so so we also help out with um, uh, what we call intellectual property IPs, uh, such as blog posts. Uh, we do some amount of uh, uh, code development as well. So uh, some of my colleagues have done things uh, such as automation of SAP on Azure, um, being able to get more information from Azure, do quality checks on your uh, SAP on Azure environment, those kinds of things. But uh, today, what we're talking about is the the um, Azure Monitor for SAP Solutions, and I think you showed the URL there for just a second. Why don't I uh, show my screen? I have a demo, a bit of a demo prepared. Uh, or planned, I should say. <laughs> okay, so uh, so first, what I wanted to do is show the the web page where we um, talked about the whole process. So this is a pretty good documentation on how to set up Azure Monitor for SAP with the HA provider. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I guess what I should do is give a little background, uh, really quick, about what. AMS is Azure Monitor for SAP and what the HA provider is. And then what we'll do is go set up a new AMS uh, installation, create a couple of providers, and then look at the data that we get. Sounds good? Perfect. Yep. Okay. So uh, and and you might want to capture this URL uh, or or search on the Microsoft Tech community for Azure Monitor for SAP solutions. But well, so starting off, what is what is Azure Monitor for SAP? Well, uh, I'll click over here. Uh, Azure has a great amount of 
metrics and monitoring of, of virtual machines from a technical perspective. So I was just uh, taking a look at my HANA instance and I bet we could guess, anybody who knows HANA could guess what these peaks are every 15 minutes in, in my virtual machine. Uh, yeah, Holger, any guesses? <laughs> ha, you're putting me here on the spot. Um, yeah, I know. Every 15 minutes. I'll, all right, I'll give you the answer. It's a save point. Uh, so every 15 minutes, my uh, my HANA instance is uh, doing a save point and, um, and saving all the data that I have in my database out to the disk. But, but so this is really awesome. You can see the overall uh, activity, um, you can see things like CPU usage and that kind of thing, but it's not SAP specific in any way. So, so what we, uh, what what customers asked us for is how do we see more information specific to my SAP deployment? So we created this thing called Azure Monitor for SAP, and uh, what it does is it can collect more information on the insides of SAP, for example, the uh, central services, um, tell you about transaction rates and things like that. Um, it can also collect internal information about HANA, so you can see queries and memory usage and a lot of the things that you might see in, in HANA Studio. Um, and, uh, and then also the part that I'm uh, really familiar with and working with is the uh, cluster monitoring. So what this will do is, uh, you know, most of our customers will be implementing HANA, for example, as a cluster of two instances so that we have high availability failover. Uh, so that they, if there's a problem on one machine, we can fail over to the other, really maintain high availability. So, uh, so what this, um, what we call a provider does is um, give you more information about the status of your cluster. So why don't I do this? Why don't I go ahead and start, uh, start implementing this in my subscription? So this is my Azure subscription. I, I make a lot of use of these dashboards, which are really cool. Um, what I what I generally do with a new project is create a new dashboard and then go to my resources and let me go to my resource group. What you can do is pin your resource to the dashboard so you just see all the things that are most important to you. So so that's really cool. And what I always do is put uh, GMT <laughs> and I'm in Seattle, so I, I put this because I'm constantly having to translate between those. Um, so that's really useful. Anyway, silly little Azure hacks, right? Um, so what I'm going to do here is create a uh, uh, new Azure monitor for SAP. Azure monitor for SAP, it's Azure Monitor mm -hmm. for SAP Solutions. I'll go ahead and create this. And this is my subscription and the resource group. I created that for uh, Microsoft Ready, uh, I think a year ago. Um, and uh, let's see, um, I have to come up with a name and a region. Unfortunately, at this point, we've only deployed Azure Monitor for SAP. It's only available in these regions. We'd love some feedback from uh, folks if they'd like to use that in different regions. And it, it takes some work for us to support that. So we want to do what's uh, most impactful. But Ross, and, does, does it mean, um, let's say I have deployed my SAP system in another region. Can I still monitor these um, these SAP, SAP system in the other region, or um, does the Azure Monitor really have to be deployed in the region where my my SAP system is also located? Well, that's a complicated. There's a complicated answer to that uh, because um, for the most part, it will work if you can peer networks together. Yep. So if I uh, in fact, in, the, in what I'm going to show today, I'm using the AMS in West US 2, but my actual instances are in South Central US. Um, however, I, I think that's a bit of a hack, 
and um, and so is not supported in all the cases. In, in particular, um, I believe the HANA provider is is not really supporting um, working that way. If you have to go through the uh, load balancer, it's not going to mm -hmm. be supported. Okay. So, so yeah, uh, I would say your your um, your uh, results will vary. Your mileage will vary, as they say. Um, so, what I did is I went through and filled this out. I'm in West US. I have this is my virtual network, and um, I'm going to put it in the uh, West subnet to one. That's mm -hmm. just uh, have to have to set it up on a network. Now. Uh, these are kind of interesting. I you can either use an existing log analytics. So, log analytics. If if you think back to my previous tiny little demo about the the machine uh, metrics, all of this data is collected in uh, a time series database called log analytics. Mm -hmm. And so you can either create a new log log analytics workspace. Or one that I already have. I like using the one I already have. Uh, so for a lot of customers, they say we have one lot of analytics workspace for everything and put it all in there, which is really useful because then you can correlate things. Um, and then finally, there's a shared data with Microsoft support. Now, what I would, would what I generally do as a, a user of such things, I usually say don't share it, but <laughs> it's really useful in, in um, support cases to share because then um, the support engineers can do uh, some queries on the data to see um, you know, if, if there's anything that's not showing up properly. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here is we go and add, there's this concept of providers. <laughs> And so for each provider type, it, it's a technical kind of a connector or adapter to uh, uh, a, a individual kind of technology. So for example, here, here are all the providers that we have currently. NetWeaver, HANA, SQL Server, uh, the Linux operating system, and then uh, what we're gonna mm -hmm. talk about today, the HA cluster. So I'll choose HA cluster, and then we have a few things that we need to fill out. Uh, a name, which is uh, basically, I can make up a name here, demo provider, something like that. Um, the, the real important thing is the Prometheus endpoint. Now, I kind of skipped over this part, but the Prometheus endpoint is, uh, well, you have to prepare your monitored instances in the cluster to be able to provide data to AMS. And in SUSE Linux, we use a, a connector called Prometheus. It's really just a way to uh, offer up monitoring data. In this case, my Prometheus endpoint is HTTP. Um, and let me get my uh, 10.0.0.20. Uh, and then port 9664 slash metrics. OK, so uh, this is this is the Prometheus endpoint. And if I go to like a, a browser or a curl or, or wget, I can just, you know, hit that URL and it'll give me a bunch of metrics. That's the metrics that we're consuming um, in AMS. OK. And then I put in my SID. In, in this case, it's H10. <laughs> uh, host name is HANA1 and cluster. This is the cluster name. So when you create a pacemaker cluster, you give it a, a, a name. So I, I haven't been very creative. I've left it as the default of HA cluster. OK, and, and that's basically it. That, that's the configuration. All right, and then we, we basically say review and create, and it goes and creates that thing. All right, now one thing that happens, where this takes a few minutes to create. What it does is it, it creates a uh, resource group in your subscription that has all of the resources that um, are needed for AMS. So uh, 
that's actually uh i'll do the uh julia child kind of thing and i've got a uh sap monitor that i've already created and that's here um and and this is kind of useful we can go look at the managed resource group there's a virtual machine in there a um uh, uh key vault a few other resources a storage account that are used for uh the sap monitor uh now let's go look at the, the actual ha cluster so i connected my um providers to my cluster now i there's one thing that i forgot to to add if we look at the providers that i have set up you'll see that i have an uh, a central services cluster i have a hana cluster and i have an nfs cluster and what i do is i create a provider for each of the instances in the cluster so that's really important um, this is so that if we have failovers or whatnot uh, in the cluster that will get monitoring data from each of the instances. Mm -hmm. OK, OK, and just just for clarification, I mean, now um, you you have obviously, yeah, you have one pacemaker cluster, but as what we have seen right now, you have basically two Azure monitoring solutions now connecting to two the very same things. Two, two providers. providers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I have one cluster. Uh, for HANA, let's say here, it has two nodes, HANA 1 and HANA 2, and I set up a provider for each one for of those. See, see that um, see that URL? There's yeah, a yeah, little 20 and 21, yeah, IP, okay. IP yeah. address. So, okay. so when we're all done, it should take about five to 10 minutes for the data collection to start and get put into log so analytics. And, and then what we will get is these views. Now, let, let's take a look at this really quick. Uh, what we see is a, a little hexagon for each of the clusters that we have. This is old data down here from providers that I deleted. So uh, let's take a look. Now, first, what we see is some coloring here. Um, the uh, my my HANA cluster and my NFS cluster are good. My um, my uh, central services cluster though is is red, and the reason it's red right now is because I put it in maintenance mode. So we're not really it's not active as such. It's not taking any action. Now I'll click on my HANA cluster, and this is one thing that I in in the visualization that that is a little frustrating. Is that I scroll the size of these things? And ah, you what resize. I really want, okay. yeah. <laughs> what I really want to do is scroll the scroll the page. Down. Now let's look at the features here that we added. So, um, if you've ma uh, managed a HA cluster at all, you probably tested the failover, like manually moving resources from one uh, one node to the other. Will you use? You can say. Um, in, in SUSE CRM resource move or resource migrate and then the resource name. What that does is it puts constraints into the cluster that say that that resource either has to be on the, the given node or it can't be on the given node. What we've seen is customers forget those <laughs> and it changes the behavior of the cluster, right? If you have those rules in place. So what this will do is if you create any of those constraints it'll show up here well right now i don't have any oh that's my other deployment let's let's say go away on that all right so so i don't have any of those but this is a great reminder right because if you have any that are listed there it will change the behavior of the cluster and you need to be uh, aware of that all right so then here on the left hand side we see the status of our nodes and the, both of these views were there and uh, have been there for a while. But what we've added down here is the ability to see the status over time. So, for example, uh, I haven't had any failovers, so this is a little less exciting. But <laughs> but what we see is is that over the last uh, we can set the time range over the last 48 hours that. 
Oh, I have too many data points for some reason. Let's say 12 hours. Let's see if that works. All right, there we go. Over the last 12 hours, I haven't had any changes in the status of my clusters. So that's really good. Um, and, the, and you can say uh, which node, of course. You can also click on, on these things here. But, um, but what you want to look at is if, if, any, if you have any problems, you can see when those problems happened and, and what, that, what the nature of that was. And essentially, we have the same thing from a resource status point of view. So what will happen with resources is typically you'll start getting errors uh, or failures in the resource. And then at some point, the cluster will say, we've had enough of this. We're going to move it to a, a, a node that's having a better time of it. So for example, here, I'm looking at my, well, let's choose a different one. Let's choose the HANA database itself, okay? And so I'm not getting any errors, but if I were, we might get to a point where the cluster says, move it to the other node. Mm -hmm. so, so that's really useful. Now, um, you're probably thinking, okay, that's all great, but I don't want to sit here and watch these charts, right? Um, so, what we're doing in the next uh, in the next couple of months, we're going to release being able to set alerts. So you'll be able to set alerts, for example, for when uh, um, the cluster failed over the HANA from one node to another, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the biggest thing we want to <laughs> uh, be notified of is if there is a, a failover or if there is a node failure. If a node fails, then we probably want to new, know that and do something about it. So that that's going to make use of the um, the the notification framework that's available in Azure, which is which is quite nice because you can uh, set like kind of like distribution groups of people who are notified, and they can choose how they're notified via via text message or or email. Those kinds of things. Or you can actually automate the whole process, you know, send it to uh, Azure DevOps or something like that. Now, one other thing that we're we're developing, this is in progress, is right now this is only supported on SUSE Linux, but we're developing support for Red Hat as well, mm -hmm. um, and and so that should be also released in the next couple of months. Cool. All right, okay. so that's really what I had. Any any questions or anything that that I forgot to mention? No, I think that's that, that's great. And and for me, the um the 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 beautiful thing there is, I mean, when when I set up my first pacemaker cluster, it was extremely complicated. And you you made a mistake there, you made a mistake here, and then it was a lot of troubleshooting, and ah, it was a mess. And I think in the meantime. We have a lot of fantastic scripts that actually automate the whole cluster setup. So um, uh, you, you can run a Terraform Ansible script and then you have your cluster running, but then it's it's a black box for you. And exactly. I think that's exactly where the Azure monitor and especially now this HA cluster monitoring comes in where I can now use this tool to actually help me monitor and see what's actually going on. So that this black box that was automatically set up for me, which is great, <laughs> But I, I now have at least a little more insights in 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 what is actually happening there, and um, I yeah I think this this is really nice to to give me a little more transparency of actually what's what's going on. And I mean, unfortunately, your cluster is working, so it would have been nice to see some 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 error messages there from time to time. But um, yeah, it's 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 great to have this information now in Azure and to be able to react. Um, to, to some of the things that might happen there. Yeah, I think here, uh, uh, this is a little... Um, yeah, Perfect. But what would be nice, uh, so one thing to be aware of, I would say, is that if, for example, a node fails, if, if we have something that just goes offline for whatever reason, then it does take, I would say, a minimum of two minutes to mm -hmm. have that data be reflected in here. So. Um, 
you know, it depends on what kind of behavior you want to have. If you want, you know, an administrator to go do something immediately, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. Uh, that probably should be on an alert basis. But but if we do look at one that's having problems like that, my uh, my central services, well, it's a little bit um, uh, not exciting because I just put it into maintenance mode. Um, and and so my second instance, it's saying it's unclean um, from a from a cluster perspective. It's still running on on the first instance, though. I can tell that. Um, and uh, so I, I think that um, what what would be a great demo it might take some time is for us to go like kill one of the instances and see how it's reflected in the, the AMS uh, visualization. Maybe we can do this next time and then we can trigger an alert or something and then hopefully see this information. That would be well, nice. you know what? As a as an idea for a future podcast, I think it would be really nice. I I've just had so many conversations with customers who've asked, you know, what should I expect? The documentation is really good, but it, it, there's just no way it can go into uh, as much detail as I would really like to see. Mm -hmm. So we could do a lot on a video where we just show the actual experience. So you just signed yourself up for, for another episode <laughs> where <laughs> Oh great. Bar work. <laughs> that sounds fun. No cool. Let's let's do this. Let's target really this. I, I think that would be very helpful because I, I think with this whole Azure monitoring solution for SAP right now, we see a lot of interest with customers. Um and, and just last week we I mean um we had colleagues from Microsoft Digital, um Santosh and um Ah, and his colleague, sorry about that, <laughs> um, um, joining um, the call. And they, they were also really talking about how they monitor actually um, the SAP system. And they, they were not yet using Azure Monitor, but um, they they also told a very interesting story how by, by not only monitoring the CPU usage or something like that, but really being able to look inside the SAP system um, that you can do a lot of fantastic things there. So I... I, I definitely see a lot of interest right now from from customers on Azure monitoring. And um, as you said, once we have this information then available in log analytics, then we can trigger a lot of exciting things and and uh, start a lot of really interesting uh, processes from there. Well, and and actually, I can show this really quick. This is quite simple. If if we go over, and I I don't know if you noticed what I was clicking through. I was looking at my the overview of my Azure Monitor for SAP. And over here I have, there's the managed resource group again, but here's the link to the log analytics workspace. Mm -hmm. And over here where this all this is showing up for me is here in this table. Now, what's really cool, I think, is th this is just very open. All of the development of this is being done on GitHub. Um, you can go look at what the collector VM is doing. You can look at um, mm -hmm. what the what the visualization workbooks are doing, but but that and you can also see what the underlying data is. So here I'm just querying on the actual data that the visualization is looking at. So so what you can do is correlate things that are happening, right? Mm -hmm. So you can correlate this with for example, um, if I have insights on my actual VMs, I can I can do queries. So, um, what what ends up happening? <laughs> what's happened with me at least is I've gotten pretty good at writing Custo queries. I would suggest that if you if you're diving into this, to uh, take a look at what um, what Custo query language looks like, mm -hmm. because because everything that we're doing. And I'm just going to say, uh, forget my edits. Everything that we're doing here, that like the status of everything, all of the data that's returned, this is all driven by Custo query language queries. I have and to, you can I actually look at those things. 
I, I always need to Google. I if I create a custom query, I I know the basic. I stuff usually use I Bing always... actually, but <laughs> <laughs> okay, I Bing of course. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you Google on Bing. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But 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 yeah. Um. So uh, and and you can actually there's an edit button. You can go and look at these, and if you want to okay. customize it, you can do that. So one question, I mean, uh, when you install this uh, Azure Monitor for SAP solutions, you somehow you need to specify the the dedicated net, v VNet or subnet, yeah? So you are somehow connected to one VNet. So if you have your uh, systems cross different VNets, you need to deploy different uh, Azure Monitor for all those networks, correct? Yeah, that's really true. So, so let's take a look at this. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know how much time we have left, but I I uh, I love this stuff. Um, so what we do if we take a look at the managed resource group, this is the automatically deployed resources that um, really support the Azure Monitor for SAP. So we have a uh, a key vault. Uh, uh, managed identity uh, and a virtual machine. So this virtual machine here is the one that's actually like for HANA, it's reaching out for, ha for to HANA doing doing those monitoring queries and putting the data up into log analytics. Mm -hmm. So so that has to be able to access the the VMs. And you're exactly right is that if you if you have multiple vnets like a lot of customers have a production vnet versus a uh, pre-prod or qa let's say um you, you would have to have multiple instances of this the the cost is pretty low though it's really um the the cost is really for the azure resources that are used there's not any additional cost for azure monitor for sap but still still they're all if they're all writing to same log analytic workspace i can still do my uh custo query complex query cross landscapes and have a very nice reporting correct exactly exactly so uh, and in fact um you know since these resources are here now um you you can uh, th this is in your subscription of course so you can uh, log into that machine um, we don't really recommend doing a lot of messing around or having other workloads running running on that but um, but but there you can do things like operating system updates and things like that perfect yeah. great Ross I great. think. That was a, a very nice uh, overview of the HA cluster functionalities of the Azure Monitor for SAP solutions. Thank you for that. And you already volunteered or you already signed up for, for a follow-up um, uh, where we will take a closer look and um, uh, do some some tests of how, how this works and maybe we can shut down a cluster. So we'll, we'll find some some cool scenarios that you can guide us through that sounds wonderful yeah thank you Great. cool good with this um yeah thank you very much again ross um it was great to have you and i'm looking forward to uh having you again on the show um, with this thank you very much everyone for joining and talk to you next week again thank you bye 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 bye, bye.